So we, okay. <clears throat> so, so interference with which edge states or edge modes, why? Because it, it's really super convenient, okay? Because electrons are directed exactly where you want them to go, okay? And the edge mode choose a very, they are very uh, thin, okay? They are very narrow, like a one dimensional chain, so you have a very defined area. And there is no backscattering. <coughs> okay. So now we have to fool somehow the edge mode if you take interferometer like this, which I did before I used, I, used, I didn't interfere in the Hall effect, then the edge mode will tend not to split here, but to go sort of in one direction, so we have to fool it out somehow. And two interferometers that had been used, mostly the easy one is the Fabry Perot, I'll go to it, and then the Marzender is a bit more complicated one, <coughs> had been extensively used over the years to, to measure interference, mostly in the integer regime. So I start with the Marzender. It's a borrowed word from optical interferometer <coughs> that you probably all know. That you have two beams, you have two, two, two sources. Here I have only one source. There is another one here not shown. And two detectors. <coughs> and one of them you have transmit, transmit. And the other one reflect, reflect. And because of pi over 2, pi over 2 reflection angle in the beam splitter, you get if the phase is the same, there is no any... In the lengths here are the same, then you'll get everything will come or at D1, and if you add a pi here, uh, or, or as a matter of fact, uh, uh, pi here, yes, you'll get now phase coming here. And when you change the phase adiabatically, you move it around, you can get in, in two detectors different, as I'll show you in a second, different interferes that complements to the conservation of, of energy input. So <clears throat> in quantum wall effect, so this is a MESA, Okay, and you have two detectors, D1 and D2, okay, and there is a single source. The other source is to sit inside that I'm, I'm not using it. And this is quantum point contacts that replace the beam splitter. Okay? So you come with an edge mode, and here you split it, say, half. So half of it goes all around, and the other half goes around here. Okay? They meet again, they interfere, and then some of, them, of it is reflected to D2, and some of it <coughs> is reflected into or transmitted into D1. And this is in the quantum Hall effect. There is a magnetic field enclosed in this area. This is the confined area between the two paths. Okay? The white region here is etched. Okay? And the important part here topologically that you have an omic contact sitting inside the Mars sender, which is has its own problems. But this is really a truly two-path interferometer. As I'll show you later, the Fabry Perot is a multiple path. And then you can change the, the flux by changing the magnetic field, or you can change the area by pushing it with modulation gates. That's the name we give them. OK, so, so this is actual, I'll show you data, which is, which is very typical even. So you can change the phase exactly as I change by area or magnetic field. OK, and this is with the modulation gate, and this is with magnetic field. You should, you should get every flux quanta uh, 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 an oscillation. And this is not artist drawn, but this is really result, experimental results as a function of, this was a function of area, modulation gate, this is a function of magnetic field. In this particular case, the visibility, which is defined basically the difference divided by the sum, is, is quite high. Okay, and the one thing I want you to pay attention to, that's why I say mind the slope here, the slope here is very important. This is what we call a pyjama. Okay, because it reminds us one. And then as we decrease the area, let's say this is the negative direction, then we have to increase the magnetic field to stay on the same phase. Okay? So this is what we call the, the Aron of Bohm pyjama. Okay? And that's very, very important to know that we are seeing not Coulomb type effects, which I'll show you later, but to see really, truly coherent Aron of Bohm effects. Okay. So now then we come to, the, to, to this desperate time of not seeing interference. <clears throat> so we were looking on many, many reasons why as we go toward Fini factor 1 <clears throat> and below this, okay, and this is, let's say, pretty much the plateau of the 1 is somewhere here. As we go, uh, uh, we take an interferometer, and you see here the Fini factors are 1, 2, and 3, and we interfere only the most outer edge, okay? because you have other edges, but you interfere only the most outer edge, the higher one are being just, you know, reflected back. 
And as we look at it here, we have, and not only us, there is few groups that show it, that you see interference, the highest interference is about between one and two, feeling factor, and then it drops down, and it kind of disappears. I will go back at the end of my talk and show you a little bit what's going to happen here. <coughs> so, so why does it disappear? Okay, so after uh, uh, years of looking, we found, I'll show you the, the following understanding that, that we have in our particular device, in this particular device, but I think it's quite general. So we're looking for a reason, okay? So take a look now, again, looking on this. This is sort of the whole effect, all the way, you know, you go down from, from high feeling factor, let's say one and a half or so, down. And then we look on interference and look on this, it's a bit difficult to see the dots here, but this black is high, it's a bit feeling factor two, and then I move with magnetic field down. At the same time, <coughs> I am looking on the conductance of, of, of the quantum point contact. Okay, it has two quantum point contact, I look only on the conductance of one of them. Okay. So, so okay, so this is, uh, I'm looking on of, of the outer edge, and you, you sit down and you pinch it off here. And the interference as we go down toward one, slowly, slowly comes down and start having some noise in the system and it disappears. Okay, it disappears here at one. But on its way down, you see that you develop a one-third plateau. Okay? Okay, so the one-third plateau gives you some kind of a clue that there is some edge below. Okay? Some, uh, uh, you form somehow an incompressible region of one-third below. And what I'm showing you is not in one device, it's, it's universally there. Okay, so now let's look at this one-third plateau for a second. What's special about this one-third plateau? So this is the one-third plateau. This is the, the nonlinear transmission. You see it's quite flat. If you sit on the plateau and you change the voltage, the transmission doesn't change. It's very nice, very convenient, okay? And this is, again, at, it's low enough temperature, okay? It's about 12 millikelvin or so. And then always, the better the sample, the lower the temperature, the uglier is the conductance through the QPC. Okay. Here is the plateau. And then on the plateau, as I showed you before, what does it mean? It means that one third plateau, one third edge goes through and the two third remaining is reflected. So there is no partitioning, right? You have a full edge going through. Yet, if you measure on this plateau, you see noise. And that's very surprising to have a plateau with noise on the plateau. Okay. Where does the noise come from if there is no partitioning? So this was, uh, this was sort of a point that I'm going to elaborate now. So what I want to do now, before I try to explain the reason for the wine noise on the plateau and the clue for the disappearance of interference, I want to go back to the two-third. Okay? Remember I talked to you about the two-third, and let's talk about it for a minute and see what happens in the two-third. So we think that the two-third behavior is exactly like this, like McDonald suggested in the early, in 1990, okay? And we talked about it yesterday. However, there is another, op okay, uh, what, when you take the one-third, two-third plateau, and you measure the noise in the one-third plateau. So again, we take the edge, and we partition it with a QPC, and we measure the noise, and we want to see what is the charge. So look now, when you have now this two-third plateau, you have now a plateau, the two-third state, you have a plateau of one-third, okay? And this is almost all the time. Not all the time, almost all the time in the polarized two-third. In the, in the non-polarized two-third that I'm not going to talk about, uh, 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 there is no plateau. Anyhow, this plateau again suggests that there is one, two one-third going through, right? One-third and one-third. Yet, on this plateau, again, there is noise on the plateau. And if you measure now the Fano factor, or let's call it the charge, okay, charge here is two third E, the charge of the filling factor. You remember yesterday I showed you the charge of two fifths at low temperature was two fifths, not one fifth, and three sevenths was three sevenths. So again, we see the filling factor. I won't call it charge, I call it the Fano factor. Okay, so we have noise on the plateau, and then, but we think that the behavior is this way, right? It's two one-thirds, one reflected, one transmitted. Why do we have noise? Shouldn't have any noise. Okay, so here it took some time to understand it. Okay, so what happens now is 
Let's look now on the issue of edge recon. Why does it, why, why is it not McDonald? Why is it two one thirds? Okay? So, so let's now look on another possibility for this, for this two third. This proposed in 1992 or four, I forget at the moment, by May, uh, Eagle Meir, that in order to minimize the energy, if the edge is soft enough, and rather than dropping, rather than dropping from two thirds to zero, or from the McDonald's picture from one to zero, okay, the potential, another, there is edge reconstruction, which I will use a lot. So the edge reconstructs, and again, you form now one third, one third in, incompressible uh, 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 liquid at the edge. And this is not drawn in proportion, okay? And, and, and this happens probably in soft edges, and our edges are always soft. I don't know how to make a sharp edge, okay? And then what happens later, then there is some reorganization and gapping or localization of these modes, okay? And the prediction is that all these guys, so you have here, you see that you have here, if you look here, there is upstream one third, downstream one, upstream one third, downstream one third, okay? And then all of these guys together form a one third downstream, and the leftover is one here. And the, and the way that you're supposed to draw it, maybe that this is starting here, and it's very broad, okay? And then you have, he proposed that you should have two one third, and of course in two third, the central charge is zero, then you're supposed to have some two other modes going in the opposite direction to get, to get a, a, a C equals zero. Okay. Okay, so now his proposal, they have one third and one third and two neutrals. Well, is this the correct interpretation? Because we see also one third and one third. So, so, so forget about this, let's try now and test this one. And now this one looks like one third and one third, and the edge now should look like this. It will reconstruct now and look like this after equilibration between the modes. Okay, so we made an experiment with two QPCs. It's a very simple experiment, okay? We have two QPC, and the distance between these two QPC was different in two experiments. So let's look on the long distance. You see this is two microns, so from here to here is about seven microns or so. So now we are having now this model of one third and one third. So we inject from here, this is half, this is half. Half of it will go here, and it will continue down here. But then don't forget, uh, I didn't show you here, there is also a cold mode from here coming up. This is the ground here. And, the, and, the, and you must have two one third anywhere, everywhere, yeah, every edge. Okay, so now you have this one, which is half here, okay? And a cold half here. And what happens now, that they equilibrate together because they go for seven microns. So this is hot and this is cold. Half of the charge goes from here to here. And what comes down to the other side, you see, this is only a quarter arrives on the other side because another quarter comes here <laughs> after equilibration. But now, if you go now to a very narrow, I mean, a difference between the two QPCs, it is very small. So hopefully you don't let the two one third equilibrate, okay? Then what you see really that it's again the same story. They don't equilibrate. There is no equilibration here, and what comes down here is zero. Okay, so this pretty much guarantees that indeed, at least in this, in this experiment, that indeed there is one third and one third. Okay? Of course, always when we measure two thirds, we see upstream mode, neutral mode. But I don't know if it's one or two, but we always see. Okay, so in this story, it's two, and in the McDonald's story, it's one. OK, so now, if you now still, OK, so why am I telling you all this thing? Why do we still have noise on the plateau? OK, OK, so this is not a simple edge. It's not a simple plateau. There is also neutral modes there. So again, let's look at it this way. So you have now this one third and one third going around. This is, let's say, half, OK? And then it goes here, and I, I'm changing the color a little bit because the red gets a little bit bluish, and the bluish gets a little bit red because there is equilibration here, and there is an energy loss from the red to the blue, okay? And since we must have neutral mode, this equilibration, okay, there is because of disorder, okay? Then there is some dissipation and excitation of an inner neutral mode, okay? The neutral mode is to be excited from somewhere, okay? So now you have this, this, this upstream neutral mode going around, Okay, it continues down there, and then it breaks apart to electron hole pairs, 
And when they go back now, because this is charged now, it goes back here, it partitions and gives you noise. The amazing, side, the amazing part is that this complicated event, this neutral stuff that breaks down, that appears and, and, and gives you noise, gives you exactly a final factor of two cells. Okay. And this is what happens also in other whole conjugate states. Okay. But there is a paper by Yuval Geffen et al. That, that has a simple theory it called its neutralons that breaks down, etc., and explain in a simple model why do you get the final factor of two-thirds. Okay, so now after showing the two-thirds, let's go back to the experiment of the one that at one, suddenly the visibility disappears. Okay, okay so if you go now back to one, okay, this was the model. This is the Geffen, the, the Egan Meir and... and, and Yuval Geffen model. But now if you go to one, it's not so different. Okay, also here, if you have one, then maybe you have here also one third, because we see the one third plateau there, right? Remember, you see the one third plateau when we pinch it off, because also this will somehow resemble the, the, the non-magnetic field decay of the potential when the carriers go down to zero at the edge. Okay, so if you now look at this and you say, here is this edge reconstruction, okay? And now you have a two-third and one-third, okay? So there are two modes. Now, central charge is one at one, so you need one, one neutral mode going backward, okay? So the one that's not supposed to have any, any upstream mode, because of edge reconstruction, may have, this is the explanation, on upstream mode. So the story now looks like this, okay? So the one breaks apart to two-third and one-third, okay? And in the QPC, this is from the source, it's hot. So the one third at the plateau of the one third goes through. You see a plateau. The two third goes back. Okay? And then from the ground, the cold one comes back. I should have drawn different colors. So again, you have equilibration between the hot and the cold. And here you have equilibration between hot and the cold. And the neutral mode arrives in the opposite direction. And boom, you have noise. Okay? So you have noise on the plateau. And I didn't mention to you that if you measure the noise on the plateau of the feeling factor one and the plateau of one third, you get the feeling factor one. Okay? So this, I think, should be explained somehow theoretically because always this, this neutral mode conspires to give you exactly the feeling factor of the feeling factor of the, of the bulk itself. And now take a look, just I'm giving you an example here. This is a beautiful example of all the whole conjugate states, two thirds, three fifths, four thirds, not all of them, but going in series. All of them has plateaus. Okay, this is one third. This is, has here two plateaus. This is here one plateau, two plateau. There is another one down here. And any plateau that you measure, there is noise on every of, of these plateaus. And you show you how the two thirds is complicated. Each plateau suggests another incompressible region somewhere there. And all of them gives you the feeling factor. The noise, the final factor here is two-thirds, and here it's three-fifths, and here it's four-thirds. I think it's a beautiful, interesting problem that I would encourage 90% here are theorists to look at it. Okay, so now, but okay, fine. So on around one and whole conjugate state, a little bit above one, we have neutral mode. But why don't I see interference in one-third? One-third is a trivial edge, right? I don't, we didn't ever see interference at one-third. So now, here is, I'm um, just skimming quickly through a simple experiment. So let's look, since interferometers usually are small, there are a few microns apart at most, maybe there is a neutral mode because of edge reconstruction in one third too. But if you try to measure it at long distance, you see nothing, okay? Okay, so, so this is an experiment and I will not elaborate because I don't have time to talk about it. Here we, we, we send charge, current, and we and we excite the neutral mode, not at the back side of the contact that I showed you before, at this hot spot, but at the QPC. And then when you excite it, then we look for neutral mode here at the amplifier. This is the downstream mode, and this is the upstream mode. And as you see exactly one third, there is also upstream. There is a little bit in the bulk too, but don't, don't look at it now. But there is also noise that we measure, like I showed you yesterday, in the one third too. Okay. So, so it's weaker. You see the numbers are very small. It's very challenging to measure this noise. If, if you see this, this is about one po the 4 kTG of one millikelvin. So it's a lot of integration time. 
okay? And the same thing you measure also in two-fifths and four-thirds and all these things. So every fractional edge we ever measured, okay, have an edge reconstruction in gallium arsenide, two-dimensional electron gas, many different structures etched or gated. And here, basically, I'm giving you edge reconstruction repeat generally, okay? But very few people are doing this experiment, so I have nobody, nobody to talk to and compare with in all fractional state, in edge to gated edges, leading to a counter-propagating edge mode. If you try to look on them or on more than 10 microns or so, you don't see it because they gap each other. They get localized, okay? But when you build small interferometer, boy, they are there, okay? An effort to sharpen it, we did gates, we, we were not successful. And these neutral modes are modes that carry energy. They can be excited at the QPC. As you enter the, the, the interferometer, boom, you excite a neutral mode, you lose energy. You deface. Or they had been to begin with, and they just bombard your, your quasi-particles, and they deface it. So everywhere that there is neutral mode in the system, I can understand why interference is not there. OK. So, so, so that's my summary on the Mach-Zender interferometer because it, I think it's very general, but these experiments had been done on a Mach-Zender interferometer and not on a fabri perot one. Now we'll go to the fabri perot one, which is kind of very, very simple experiment. A, a, I'm sorry, device, okay? So, so you know the fabri perot has two mirrors and we go back and forth, back and forth. So there are many, many trajectories here, okay? Okay, this is sort of like a trivial thing. But most of the time when people use it, they open the QPC, they make the mirrors very transparent, and then basically the first trajectory, the first round is the dominant one, and the higher, the higher one are, are going down very, very quickly. Okay, so, so first of all, let's just think for a second what is expected interference in the fractional regime. I didn't show you this transparency. This will be... A, it's, it's, it's complicated, and there are many, many options. What do we expect if you have, let's say, one cell particle? You go to a fabri perot. Okay. I didn't show you in the Marzender because it's much more complicated there, but if you have a question, why did I show you in the Marzender, ask me at the end of the talk. So here, what you expect to get here, let's go to a, a Fini factor one, okay? So always, you know, this is, this is the, basically the, the statistical expectation. You expect to see an Aron of Bohm effect, and you expect to see also a, a, a particle goes around another particle, the exchange statistics. Okay, so if you have one, and this basically will lead to the result of Manfra from Purdue that I'll show you at the end of the talk on the, and his observation. Okay, so feeling factor one, every phi naught, every phi naught, you get a period. In one third, okay, you should get every three phi naught. And there's no reason not to get three phi naught. I mean, bias young here doesn't work. There's no hole in the center. There's nothing like this. Forget about bias young. At least I forget about it. It took me time to forget about it. Because you have this quasi-particle goes around, and you can add quasi-particle as many as you want if it's totally a run of bomb. If there is no Coulomb interaction at all, suppose you have, like, like Manfred, you have a lot of screening, so you can bunch quasi-particle, one-third, one-third, as many as you want into it. Okay, so you have a lot of extra charge relative to the donors, but it's okay. It's all screened, ideally. But of course, always we have charging energy, okay? So after a while, it doesn't happen anymore and you have to create something. So if you have a charging energy, and in order to create this, this you see here, this is now a quasi-particle created in the bulk, but in order to create it, you have to go above the, back, uh, above the gap, right? There's a gap, the one third, there's a gap. To create a quasi-particle, you have to go above the gap. So you need some charging energy. If you don't have charging energy at all, you will never see this quasi-particle because you, you just join them from the, from the edge. They will, the, the, the degeneracy of the Landau level will increase and it will fill up. But if suddenly it cannot do anymore because the charging energy is finite, then a hole will be created, the quasi-particle will go above, and then the phase will change. I don't know if it will go plus or minus, it depends if it's a hole or another electron comes in, and then you'll get fine out. This will be sort of the bias young. So even though the one third, in, but in order to see it, you cannot just make a full transform and see if I know, just look at the data. And you see if the data has these jumps, which I'll show you later in, in the integer regime. Okay, so let, if you just take and, and build the Fabri Perot, like, like here, and you measure it, that's what you get. 
We saw it initially, we were stunned, okay? So what you do, you change the plunger, okay, so you move electrons out one by one, okay? You cut the card here, tuck, 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 you move electrons out. But when you change the magnetic field, there's nothing, zero, all the lines are straight. Okay, how can it be? So what happens here, okay, there is no B dependence, so the flux somehow remains constant. You don't change the flux, but you change the magnetic field. So how does it happen? Because the area shrinks, okay? Okay, so I will not talk a lot about it, but the area shrinks, okay, proportional to the increasing to maintain a constant flux. Because you cannot add carriers inside, because as you increase the, the magnetic field, you want to increase the degeneracy of the Landau level, you want to shove in more and more care to fill up the Landau level, okay? But it cannot get in, because there is a charging energy. So the whole thing, the whole, le the whole you know, the Fermi C uh, around it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and at some point it breaks up. And it breaks up, it jumps by a pi, and you don't see anything in the integer regime. Okay, so what happens is that all Fabry Perot that you build are Coulomb dominated. If you don't do something very special, they are Coulomb dominated. So I want to see what does it mean doing something special. So here, this is the, 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 the comparison between the Marzender and the Fabry Perot. Okay, so, so what do you do? This is the Fabry Perot, the bare Fabry Perot, is the two QPC, modulation gate, two Q, et cetera. But now we have two ways to do it, which we tried. Okay, one of them, very powerful, to put now an ohmic contact in the center of the Fabry Perot. So now, if you want to add electrons, you can add electron, and another one will come out because it's grounded. Send the one go out. So you remove all Coulomb problem not by screening, but by removing with a pump the ground electrons out from, from the Fermi Perot. Okay, and then you get the right the right pyjama. Well, it's it's drawn in the opposite direction, but that's the right pyjama because here magnetic field up down. But that's the right Aron of Bohm pyjama. Okay, so this is a coherent effect. Another way to do it is to put a, a metal gate on the surface and screen, basically, so you can add electrons underneath and create a polarized charge on the metal, and everything will be cool. But this doesn't work below something like 4 microsquare. If you go below 4 microsquare, it doesn't help out, and it becomes Coulomb-dominated. Okay. <laughs> but what you do, if you play around, you can get sort of intermediate regime. So you don't fully screen. Okay, so you're not in AB and you're not fully in CD, and, and this is sort of the AB and this is the CD, right? And then you have something like this, and I show you some data, and the data looks like this. And here you see that you charge, charge, and, it br and an electron comes down. You charge it, and an electron comes down, and you see these little nice bumps coming there as electrons coming in. This is all electron, electron, no, integer, no, no, no fraction. So you see how the area breathes, okay? It comes down, and then stuff comes in and goes up again, and this depends on the charging energy. And if you look now in the Fourier of this, then you see this CD, which is just these straight lines, this frequency of the straight lines, because this, what I showed before, is too complicated. This checkerboard is difficult to see. But you see also the exact expectation of Aron of Bohm, the delta B of Aron of Bohm, and the magnetic, and the magnetic field of Aron of Bohm. And what we are trying to do now, because you need some charging energy to create quasi-particles, to create particles going above. If you have no, full screening, you will not see the statistic that you are looking for. So now, presently, as we talk, we are working now to be, to look in this regime with the fractional regime. The problem is that when you have a tiny, you know, ohmic contact inside or whatever, then at one third, the ohmic contact doesn't work, it becomes insulating. Problems. Okay, so here I just want to tell you about this Manfa work, very beautiful work, and his idea, okay, which he published a few months ago, was to screen, but not with a, he has also a metal gate at the top, but this is only to change density. But what he does, this is the well where carries with, has the 2D electron gas inside. And here he has two screening layer built in, but very close to the, system, to, the, to the well. So this is about 25 nanometer on each side. So he totally screened it, okay? So his charging energy became very, very small, 10 times, so 20 times smaller than the gap itself. And when he does it, he can see now, okay, he can see now, this is the one, you see this pyjama, and the one third. I never saw this one third pyjama yet. But this, so that's very, very nice because it's a Ron of Bohm pyjama, like the one. Did he see the fractional statistics? No. He saw, well, if you want, he saw three. This is, he, he saw here three phi naught, 
okay? He saw it close to four, but let's say the area changed also. But still, there are things to be done, okay? It could be that it didn't see three phi naught because the area shrank a lot, okay? One, because his interferometer is one by one micron, and one third is much wider. This is my reservation to this, but, uh, but it's definitely seen the right pyjama, okay? It could be that the charge, as I showed before, is not U of a three, because he had strong reflection. And remember that you saw when you have E of three, and the QPCs are quite close, you get E. So it could be that you see again E, okay? And he doesn't see the statistical thing because he doesn't have any quasi-particle comes in. I talked to him about it. Can he should measure the charge that is partitioned here, but he is not measuring charges yet. But I think this is a very, very nice piece of work. <laughs> okay. So now I want to move on and show you to, to the end few little things, few to tell you that the integer regime, beloved non-interacting integer regime, is beloved by interacting. So I'll give you now three quick examples. One of them is a bit longer. So example number one, I take again the Fabry Perot with an ohmic contact in the center, so it behaves our own of Bohm. Okay? Okay. So now let's take a look on the interference which, by the way, Manfa also saw in his experiment, okay? He saw this effect. He just mentioned it in a couple of lines only, but we studied it in very detailed, long papers, which is called pairing in the interference, okay? That you, might, you, you can find it if you want and read about it. So here is the, the, the RXY going from one to two to three to four, and this is an interferometer. And I'm going to interfere now the outer edge. Again, the most outer edge, okay? And now I'm looking now here, and this is the region between somewhere close to three and one. Here the disappearance, is, as you know, is, 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 is doesn't, we don't see much of it. So you see, this is the regular H over E, interference, pyjama, everything is cool. But now I'm going now to move now to Philly factor three. And look what happens. The frequency doubles. Okay? And this happens in small devices, large devices, medium devices. We worked on it for two years. It's always there. Okay? So now you have interference of, I'll, I won't call it 2E yet. I'll tell you that the period is smaller by a factor of 2. Okay? And it's smaller by a factor of 2 also when you change magnetic field and also when you change area by the gate voltage. Everything is half than here. Just by moving from here to here, and this persists all the way up to about Fini factor five. And then it disappears again. Okay? So now let me, I just want to show you, and this is it, uh, don't be afraid, I'll explain to you this to spell. So we made maybe 20 type of experiments to understand what it is, and I'll show you maybe only a couple of them. So take a look what happens here. I'm going now to add another QPC. So there is these two QPCs. Forget about, this is the inner Romy contact, okay? And forget about this addition for a second. So this is the regular Fabry Perot. And now I'm adding another QPC here. And, what, and, and this is sort of the way this, this bridge here and this bridge here is in order to play with this opening of this QPC. And now I'm a Philly factor three, where the interference is, is, is crazy, okay? And then uh, you can see here the outer edge. This is the, the most outer edge. Here is the dotted line because I partitioned it here. And then there are other two that are inside, okay? They are rounding inside. And now I can take, in this particular example, I can take, in this example, I take the green one, the most inner one, and dump it into the Omi contact. Okay? So I take it, and, and I then I can take now the blue one. The blue one here is going through, but I can also dump the blue one into the Omi contact. And also, of course, I can take and dump in the, the outer one. So on, I, I can deface. I can deface each of these three modes as I wish by throwing them into a, a ugly Omi contact that is grounded, okay? Okay, so let's see the experiments. First of all, we go to feeling factor two, where everything is normal, okay? And then I'm looking on, 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 on this particular QPC, okay? And you see, you go from two, okay? Then you go to one, and you go to zero. And I, I wrote here H over E, because this is the oscillation of H over E. And now, what, what's going to happen now? I'm going now, this, this is the inner, grounded more. This is Philly factor. So first of all, I go down to here. 
So the most inner grounded, let me see here, you see? The inner one, the field factor two, there are two of them, I'm sorry. The inner one is grounded. But the outer one that is interfering is not, okay? So only here I dump the outer one to the Omi contact. Is this clear? I, I just wanted to make sure that this is clear. It, it's simple. If you want, I'll stop and repair it again. So I can dump the red one or the green one. The red one is the interfering edge. The green one is the non-interfering edge. Okay? So now I'm plotting, now, now I will plot the interference. Okay? So this is the outer edge ground. So the interference is here, but it, it dies when I take the interfering edge, you see this red one, and I dump it to ground. There's no surprise here, right? This edge interferes, I take it, put it into ground, so it doesn't interfere anymore. Okay, but now I'm moving on, okay? So dephasing, the first inner mode is irrelevant. Only the outer mode. The inner one is irrelevant. <laughs> now I'm going to fill in factor three, okay? So there is three, two, one, of the QPC here, and, and here is the, the uh, I'm showing you here, the second, this is the first time all of them go through. Then I take now here, you can see here, I take the inner one, which is light blue, to the ground, and here I take the green to the ground, which is the second one near the red one. Okay? And now I'm looking for the interference, and see what happens. So now the interference dies when I don't touch the red one, the interfering one, only when I ground the green one. And there is no, there is interaction between them, that's the whole idea, but there is no particle exchange between the green and the red, okay? So, so, so these two edges, which I will say later on, they are strongly entangled in a way, okay? So when I take now this edge and I dump it to ground, the red one dies. So, so there was effort to try to explain it. Patrick Lee tried it, Dima Feldman tried it from Brown. We have no idea how it works. Okay, so now, now what, what the other question is, since we know how to measure charge, okay, is, do we interfere E square over two, two, two E? Or maybe just, you know, oh, many windings, or who knows what, but maybe it's not the 2E charge, okay? So we do short noise. So I'll show you what we do in film factor 2 and film factor 3 of a QPC and of the interferometer, okay? So the QPC at film factor 2, you see this is 2E and this is E, you see you measure just a regular E at the QPC at film factor 2 of a single edge. And then you go to film factor 3 and you measure also E, it doesn't matter, of a QPC. Now I'm going to measure the short noise through the Fabry Perot, the interfering Fabry Perot at filling factor two, which we measure interference of H over E. And the charge again is, is E. But when now I go to filling factor three, when the interference is H over two E, and we measure the charge, it's two E. So in a way, my Mach Zender became sort of like a superconductor. Okay, this is just a strong word. Of course, we have no understanding what's going on here at all. But this is, you have integer, simple, surprising effect. Okay, so I'll give you now two more examples, very, very short ones. Another example is this particular one. Okay, a Marzender in a nonlinear regime. Okay, so you have again a Marzender. Okay, this is just a different Marzender that we use, but, appear, but everybody saw it. The French saw it, many other people saw it. And then we are trying to measure the interference in a nonlinear regime. What do I mean by nonlinear regime? Rather than putting a little AC voltage and measure the interference, I put a DC plus AC. So I raise and I look at an electron that is sitting above some energy. And that's what we see. This is the visibility. Okay? So the visibility is going from here at the center when there is no DC voltage, 40% okay? visibility or so. And it goes down to zero, basically goes up again, goes to zero, and again, and again. And this is the different lengths of one arm versus the other, okay? And this we measure in 2006. And the other surprising thing, this is another device, you have this phase rigidity. Now we measure, when you measure oscillation, you can see also, as you change the DC voltage, you can look also on the phase of the oscillation, not only on the strength of the oscillation with the visibility. And you see 
that along this, as you change the DC, look at it, you change the DC, so you raise the electron up on some slope of, of the Landau level, and the Aron of Bohm phase okay, stays fixed. Doesn't change at all. How can it be? The flux must be able to change a little bit when you change it. No, it nailed. Okay? So basically what it shows you, the, it fixed you, jump down by pi. It means that all this visibility should be flips down, flipped down, right? Because this is negative, okay? So I should plot it up, down, and up again. So also there were, I think, 10 papers trying to explain it, trying. One paper which I did like, because maybe I want to talk about this, is by Choker, John Choker, that talks about, it takes now assuming ad hoc that there are two particles moving there, entangled somehow, and then it, take, it counts all the possibilities of interference of one of them or two of them going together, and you get this, what we call lobe structure. Okay? So is, is, it, is it now 2E again? And the very last one, number three that I want to show you, remember that I go now on the one plateau, plateau one, okay? and the visibility drops down as I enter the one plateau, but now as it goes down and it disappears slowly, we put a magnifying glass and we want to see what happens to the oscillation as I go on the filling factor one, okay? So what happens is, if you look on the right, okay, I'm on the filling factor one, okay? So I'm moving toward, here is the higher side, one plus, and here is the lower side. And suddenly you see, if you look on the, on the Fourier of this thing, you see now double frequency, okay? And if you plot it, look at this. You have this h over e, h over 2e, and there is no transition even. It's abrupt. We couldn't resolve this transition at all. So again, h over 2e. Okay, so these <laughs> this are just the three examples I want to show you, and I'll let you, I'll let you go back to your own life now. Okay, so is it really non-interacting system? Okay, what I will do tomorrow I will use everything that you saw here, except this, this, this stuff later, all the integer, and fractional, and everything like this, and I'll tell you about our experiment in the abelian and non-abelian case, switching from conductors to thermal conductors. Thank you. <laughs>
If not, let's uh, thank okay. you again.